Uh, I give the floor immediately to Greta Koppel, who is the um, uh, second speaker and uh, co-organizer of the, of, the, of the exhibition and um, uh, participant in, in, this, uh, in this project. So Greta has been uh, dealing with years, um, uh, not only with the, <laughs> not only with the, uh, with the um, objects, but also with the, uh, she has been, um, uh, she has addressed um, the issue of uh, connoisseurship, and I think that uh, herself is practicing this uh, connoisseurship uh, also for years. So uh, we are keen to uh, listen to your presentation, and then after we we would ha we will have the uh, discussion. Greta, thank you, <coughs> Krista, for the introduction. And um, thank you, Merike, for your very broad um, overview. I, in turn, will go into details. <laughs> and uh, actually, my presentation will focus on only on two paintings uh, or, or two works of art that are exhibited also in this uh, exhibition. The paintings uh, of the Bolness altarpiece and then the paintings uh, on the outer sides of the uh, fashion altarpiece in Tallinn. So, um, as, um, as the presentation is titled, can they be two works from the Michel Sitzos workshop in Tallinn? Um, so, um, um, with the, the intrigue with Michel Sitzo is that we do have uh, uh, quite many um, uh, archival documents on him. Uh, these documents uh, about, uh, uh, tell us a, uh, a lot about his life, but the documents uh, uh, tell read a little about his uh, uh, works. Uh, the Tallinn is a bit different case, but, but the Tallinn documents uh, often mention more artisan works, and uh, these two works are not um, mm, affirmed uh, by documents. So, uh, um, uh, but uh, it happens in, in time that uh, um, um, every event doesn't uh, leave a documented trail and, and also that the material tends to perish. So, but we, we uh, 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 tried to, to consider these artworks as the prime documents uh, and evidences uh, for themselves. And so, um, um, followingly, uh, the presentation that I will show you this uh, is a lot about uh, uh, about uh, style uh, comparison and uh, and comparing uh, uh, visual similarities and stylistic and technical similarities between the two uh, works of art. And uh, could uh, could this be convincing enough? to overcome this problem of uh, not having the uh, documents uh, on the, that assure the order of the works. So, but before I go further, I would like to say my thanks, otherwise I will forget them. So I, um, um, I'm very grateful and thankful to all of the colleagues that participated in this research project uh, for the uh, fruitful discussions and the exchange of ideas and their expertise. Visiting the objects in situ, um, discussing and uh, sharing the ideas was a really ex uh, valuable experience for me. And uh, uh, it certainly taught me to uh, look and to see more. So when my special thanks go, uh, goes for Johanna, uh, because uh, Johanna uh, has worked with um, uh, with the wings of the fashion also piece uh, uh, before the opening of the 2018 uh, exhibition for some time and she really knows the work very uh, closely and, uh, and her um, observations regarding the technical aspects uh, of the painting and also of the Bolnes painting uh, have been of uh, great help to uh, to form some kind of opinion about uh, uh, the authorship. So, but uh, regarding the topic in general, just to, to discuss uh, these two artworks in, in dialogue, uh, um, 
and uh, discuss them as a possible works from uh, Michael Sitzow's uh, Tallinn workshop. Uh, uh, we are greatly indebted to the study of Matthias Wenige and several uh, uh, comparisons that I will uh, show you uh, later. He has done it already earlier. So uh, uh, Matthias's uh, um, um, survey on uh, Michael Sitzow and, uh, uh, um, uh, well, uh, and the, the two other artists that worked at the uh, uh, at the court of Isabel of Castile was a real trailblazer for us. So, and also uh, um, as, a, uh, as a member of the advisory board for the exhibition in 2018, Matthias uh, persistently insisted that we would uh, lend the Bolnes also piece also to the exhibition then. And this idea was on the table, but then dropped as a possibly impossible loan um, uh, um, and uh, uh, probably also due to the fact that not all of us uh, uh, were convinced of the authorship. So, however, the hypothesis uh, to test uh, uh, or the, the idea to test the hypothesis uh, um, seemed intriguing and uh, due to the fortunate circumstances uh, um, uh, that appeared in 2018, just before the closing of the exhibition in Tallinn. Uh, um, uh, this came into um, reality. So, uh, namely, Lars Nylander came to Tallinn and, uh, and, uh, and then contacts were made uh, uh, and they were discussed with Merike Guriso and soon the idea was put into practice. So when we uh, when the, uh, we exhibited the paintings uh, of the Passion also piece uh, uh, on the exhibition at the exhibition in, in 2018, uh, it bore the attribution Michael Sitzo and Workshop with a question mark. As a result of this project, we find the question mark is excessive, and I hope that the uh, following slideshow uh, will convince you to see the kinship of the two. Uh, paintings and also their cohesiveness with uh, Michael Sitzow's, uh, so to say, canonized works. So, but um, before starting the slideshow with comparative detailed images, a um, uh, few words regarding the history of connecting the works with Michael Sitzow. So, um, it was Inga Björkman, uh, Björkman Berglund, as uh, Merike already pointed out, a Swedish art historian, uh, uh, who was the first to compare the paintings uh, of the Bolnes Holy uh, Kinship altarpiece and the ones uh, on the outer wings of the Passion altarpiece. Uh, and based um, on this comparison and uh, also um, uh, that of the few other works by, by uh, Michael Sitzow, such as the uh, Portrait of the Lady at the uh, Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna and Portrait of Christian II in Copenhagen, uh, uh, she deemed the Bolnes painting to be the work of Sitzow's Tallinn period, dated it into 1517 to 1519. So, However, this uh, 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 essay was published uh, in, uh, uh, in Swedish and also in Swedish art historical journal, and this uh, had a rather limited access to a wider art historical circle. So it was Matthias Weniger who confirmed this attribution and brought it, uh, uh, brought it into international field of uh, research. Uh, yeah, and he... Um, uh, uh, regarded both paintings uh, as uh, being completed in Tallinn uh, um, somewhere in the period of 1518 to 1525, because uh, by that time uh, Anumind had uh, um, revised uh, the date of uh, arrival of Michael Sitzow to Tallinn uh, from late 1517 to actually to early 1518. So. Um, yeah, the paintings uh, on the outer wings of the Passion Altarpiece at the Niguliste Museum were associated with Michael Sitzow uh, as early as uh, uh, late 1930s, 
and, uh, and, and this um, attribution was published uh, in a German art historical publication in 1940. This is the same uh, um, article by Paul Johansen where he, um, 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 based on archival findings, uh, identified the uh, internationally renowned court artist as, uh, uh, as Michael Sitzo and um, um, uh, as originating from Tallinn. So this uh, attribution was uh, uh, discussed uh, with experts. Uh, it was agreed uh, by German art historian Friedrich Winkler, who had uh, studied uh, Sitzu's oeuvre. Uh, then he was known as Master Michel. Mm, and uh, he also consulted uh, likely with um, Swedish-born art historian Sten Garling, uh, who worked uh, in Estonia at the time. So, and um, uh, of course, uh, uh, not all the researchers um, uh, uh, haven't agreed on this attribution. Uh, so one has to say that after uh, Johansen's uh, um, article, uh, the doubts grew and um, um, the dominating opinion before uh, Weniger's publication was that, that they are likely not by Michael Sitzo and, um, and also uh, the other option was that if they were by Sitzo, certainly not uh, his best works. So, but followingly, I will uh, um, go into uh, uh, comparing some details. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, also I would like to point out that if we compare the details, uh, uh, we have to be aware of what we are uh, looking at, at, what we are comparing. So uh, um, uh, the peculiarity of the passion altarpiece paintings uh, um, are that uh, they are uh, painted on top of the, other, uh, the original painting and they are painted in the way that uh, uh, that the first layer of painting has been partly integrated into second layer of painting. So um, uh, original, uh, originally the outer wings uh, were uh, um, uh, um, on the outer wings there were four Franciscan saints and these um, originate from Bruges uh, um, school of painting. So they can be associated with the style of Hira David uh, and uh, uh, artists as uh, um, Adrian Isenbrandt and Albert Cornelis have been suggested as uh, possible candidates. Uh, but um, uh, what the uh, um, artist who painted the second layer has done, that he uh, uh, integrated uh, 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 parts of the painting into second layer. So if you see the faces of St. Adrian and faces of St. Anthony, for example, uh, they, uh, they come from the first layer of painting. And also uh, uh, on the other wing, uh, the uh, feet of uh, St. James the Greater belongs actually uh, to uh, uh, St. Francis, only they have been um, um, painted like uh, to be uh, barefoot. Um, and, uh, and also we can regard that the face of uh, St. Mary looks that masculine because underneath of her is the face of uh, uh, St. Anthony of Padua. And so she has uh, received only a, a small facelift. Uh, uh, so it has been kind of modeled into woman. And that's, that's uh, the reason why, why she look so um, uh, uh, masculine, yeah. And, uh, and also in the case of uh, Bolnes altarpiece paintings, uh, uh, the outer wings have been uh, uh, damaged uh, uh, a great deal. So uh, the original painting has preserved only fragmentarily uh, and uh, um, stylistic, stylistically, these would have been uh, 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 these parts of the painting that would have been the best um, uh, suitors for to uh, to the uh, 
comparing the Bastion altarpiece paintings. So somewhere in late 18th century, early 19th century, uh, the altarpiece stood in a storage building and so due to the um, um, uh, bad climate uh, condition, uh, uh, the outer sides uh, were damaged. Um, but luckily, the inner sides uh, uh, were instead uh, uh, rather well preserved. Um, and so now into details. So I following just uh, show you a, a slideshow where we uh, choose with um, uh, Johanna uh, different um, uh, um, uh, details uh, where we can see trace the visual similarity but also stylistic similarity and some um, similarities in, uh, in, uh, in technical aspects. Uh, I, I believe that um, uh, this is rather evident that the uh, 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 um, uh, left um, uh, St. Adrian and the right uh, St. Eric from Bolnes, uh, that their armor uh, also the uh, two hand sword and even the, the um, position of the hand uh, that holds the sword is uh, uh, really uh, similar. And uh, some of the uh, facial types, uh, uh, the <coughs> Mary um, in Tallinn and, uh, and the St. Catherine in Bolnes uh, um, are almost like a lookalikes. Um, uh, these two faces have been also compared to, uh, to the portrait of the lady um, in, in Vienna, uh, so uh, uh, linked to the uh, characteristic facial types of Michel uh, Sitzo. Um, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, 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 other comparisons, uh, uh, St. James the Greater in Tallinn uh, can be compared to, to uh, Jude of Tadeus in Bolnes, uh, uh, also perhaps with uh, Bartolomeo, and uh, uh, I would also uh, point out the uh, characteristic uh, lower lip that they have, kind of um, swollen or... or um, and and uh, uh, which you cannot see mainly here uh, or uh, perhaps here, uh, that's well are the kind of um, um, sketchy brush strokes uh, that accentuate the uh, facial characteristics uh, uh, that are part of the uh, painting. So if you look at the uh, face of uh, 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 James the Greater, these are also evident there. Mm, uh, some more details, uh, this very uh, kind of nervous and short uh, uh, parallel brush strokes that have been used uh, to, to create uh, metal effects here in Tallinn and in Bolnes. Uh, um, um, what also appeared uh, on both paintings are this uh, black accentuate, accentuating uh, contour lines that uh, look rather coarse, um, uh, when we would uh, uh, in close distance, but, uh, but uh, one has to keep in mind that these were rather large artworks and they were meant to look from, uh, from the distance and, and then they helped to create a kind of um, uh, three-dimensionality effect. So on the left you see a hand of uh, uh, St. James the Greater and on the right uh, um, Simeon from Bolnes. Uh, these, uh, I already like, mentioned, these uh, kind of brush strokes that look like underdrawing, but these are actually part of the painting uh, uh, that they appear in Tallinn and, um, um, uh, and, uh, and also uh, in Bolnes. Uh, maybe just to skip some of the images are just to, to assure you more, uh, but the idea is the same. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, one oddity that we also traced on both uh, altarpieces were these kind of uh, smudged areas uh, with uh, uneven edges uh, um, uh, that occurred. Um, and um, uh, this might, be, uh, might indicate uh, to the technique that the artist had used uh, a piece of cloth to, to, to spread the paint or something, but we haven't done any further research. So. This is a, a curiosity, but uh, uh, something that appears on both paintings. 
Mm. And uh, in 2021, uh, we also made uh, uh, some technical analysis in Bolness, uh, 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 um, the most informative uh, uh, were the near infrared images, uh, and these uh, analyses uh, showed that. Um, uh, that the uh, Bolna Salter piece has an extensive underdrawing uh, and, and also in this underdrawing uh, layer it shows uh, many hands uh, uh, working together. Uh, I bring some examples. Uh, uh, we uh, detected uh, this uh, rather confident uh, and mastery, uh, masterly underdrawing. Uh, uh, this was uh, partly uh, uh, rather prescriptive uh, indicating also the areas uh, that should be uh, uh, like a darker or shadowy places when painted. Mm, um, uh, here is also another example, just to see uh, how the shadows were indicated. Um, uh, but uh, uh, besides that, uh, in some cases, the underdrawing was more uh, general, uh, just uh, um, kind of uh, uh, sketching it with uh, some outlines, uh, uh, the facial features. Um, and uh, uh, next to this uh, uh, mastery underdrawing, we detected also this uh, rather naive uh, and mechanical drawing. Uh, and uh, for example, on the background areas, uh, uh, um, this uh, granulated wall was uh, uh, drawn and, uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, also uh, executed in different manners. You see, there were uh, diag diagonal lines, uh, but also horizontal lines uh, 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 to kind of um, um, uh, color it. Um, and also, uh, in the phases of uh, uh, drawing, the composition was uh, altered, or the figures were shifted, um, uh, as you see here, uh, with some uh, like um, uh, St. Matthew's, Matthew, and St. Thomas. And uh, just um, recently we received images that were test images, uh, infrared reflectography, reflectography images that show also the uh, face of Andreas uh, um, um, being altered. And, and uh, this we have had no time to uh, interpreted at yet, but, uh, but the eye seems to be very uh, finely executed and it led us also to thinking that maybe this was already like uh, done, uh, uh, like al already painted. So um, uh, we don't have uh, many uh, infrared images of, uh, uh, of the works of uh, Michel Sitzo, but uh, there is one and very famous one is the uh, Berlin Madonna uh, where you can see that uh, uh, the um, a child has been altered um, already, like in a painting process. Uh, then we saw uh, corrections were made in the process of painting. Uh, uh, there was, uh, uh, you can see, rather uh, quick um, 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 brush strokes uh, that kind of correct or e erase the uh, mistakes. And here the, the uh, foot of um, uh, um, uh, Simeon has been altered. And, uh, and also uh, um, the uh, cross of St. Andrea. So you see that uh, the, there has been created uh, more space around it. Uh, this uh, mechanical manner could be also detected in the face of painting uh, some background areas. So, so it's more like a, really uh, covering just a, a space area and not very uh, up to the standards of a uh, master painter. Mm. Uh, and uh, this uh, also uh, an odd uh, um, uh, technique to cover the, the surface, this uh, zigzag technique. And uh, um, um, when uh, um, looking the uh, Bolness painting, uh, it really uh, at po uh, some points uh, strikes the eye how uh, um, kind of um, uh, loosely or, or even um, uh, 
how you say it, uh, uh, coarsely, it has been painted and, uh, and you can see that uh, uh, in some parts the, uh, the green areas cover uh, uh, the other parts of the painting and, uh, and generally the paint uh, appears to be uh, very wet and also it contains um, uh, some hard uh, particles that indicate that they weren't very finely um, mm. uh, mixed. Um, but but uh, yeah, uh, examples that this uh, similar kind of uh, uh, sloppiness can be detected also in Tallinn painting. Now, uh, just uh, um, uh, some words more. If we compare it now, uh, the two works with uh, uh, with uh, some of the known works uh, by, Mich uh, by Michel Sitzo, we can also uh, trace the, some similarities. Uh, the visual similarities, uh, for example, the face, uh, face, faces, uh, facial type of uh, uh, St. James the Greater uh, with Christian, and here the Bolness uh, uh, Jude of Tadeus, uh, uh, Bartolomeo, the examples that I already brought. Uh, and, uh, uh, and ironically, perhaps, uh, we could also compare the, the face of uh, 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 St. Olaf and, uh, and the King Christian uh, uh, to each other. Uh, but uh, there are also some technical uh, uh, um, affinities uh, uh, to point out. Uh, for, uh, for example, the swords uh, of St. Adrian um, in Tallinn and then the uh, sword of uh, Christian in Copenhagen. Mm, uh, some of the hands, um, uh, they look uh, reminiscent, or the placement of the hands uh, look, mm, uh, if we compare them with the uh, portrait of Christian in Copenhagen or the portrait of a man in, in The Hague. Yeah. And to, to conclude uh, uh, or, or finalize the uh, comparison of images uh, uh, with this Morellian um, uh, slide, um, just some hands um, that uh, uh, come close to the works of uh, Michel Sito. But uh, just uh, uh, final remarks that uh, uh, in the process of this research project, uh, to me the most revealing uh, and uh, um, and uh, also the closest to, uh, to the Sitzo portraits were actually not the paintings, but, but uh, some of the painted faces of, uh, uh, of the polychrome, the sculptures of Polnes Saltapis, uh, especially uh, um, uh, Eliud and Sebede, but also um, uh, Joachim. And uh, uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, melancholy mood and inwardness is something that, uh, that really um, um, speaks for Sitzo's art and makes his portraits to, to, uh, uh, to be so special in its uh, time. <laughs> so the last slide was about thank you, so I'm uh, thanking you. <laughs> yeah.